Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. First of all, I just want to let you guys know I lost a nail today. Anyway, no love loss. It will get, um, it'll grow back. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a little stubby. I uh, had a dispute with a woman in the dairy aisle. So yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, she was just standing in front of the um, the dairy freezer. I was just trying to get some creamer and she would not leave. So when she finally closed the door, I went in and grabbed my creamer and broke my nail in the process. So yeah, it'll just grow back. Um, I'll probably cut all of my nails uh, pretty soon here because this season is over. Anyway, moving on. I want to start creating some of the content that goes inside of my journal for my recipe book. Um, so yeah, I just started making these little cute folders and I'm going to show you exactly how I did these. Um, these are just some uh, variation of folders that I had in my stash. So you can pick these up at the Dollar Tree or any other dollar store in your area. Um, there's usually a uh, very nice pretty paper or some sort of colorful um, file folders that come in packs of three or six or sometimes even eight if you're lucky during the start of the school year is when you'll probably find those larger packs of um, of file folders so basically what I want to do is make some file folders that will go inside of my junk journal for my recipe book or menu um, meal prep book for the new year um, I have here my large guillotine I have a file folder that's already um, to go I can just grab one of these other ones I will give you the measurements of this this is a standard file folder it measures let's grab my ruler it measures all the way to the tab nine and just about a quarter inches so nine and a quarter inches to the tab the actual folder itself without the tab measures eight and three quarter inches so it's about a half inch right about here in the tab section and the entire thing measures eleven and a half inches okay we are going to cut this down so that it fits into our little book here and these measure nine and a quarter by to the tab six and just under a half so what I do is I cut it to six and a half and then I maneuver it as I go um, just so that I, I have a little bit of wiggle room and don't end up cutting it too short so of course we want to keep our fold intact so this is the natural crease that comes with the file folder I want to keep that intact and um, I am going to cut it down to just under six and a half. So I'll cut it right at six and a half so that I don't undercut it. Okay. And then I keep all of these little guys for additional um, use during the process of creating the, uh, the junk journal. So from here, okay, so let me just show you one of these. These are cut, okay? They are cut at the bottom, cut at the sides, and then I created the tab afterwards with my little tab punch from We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm going to show you how to use this thing because it's, it's pretty simple and it's very useful. So these were cut. What I want to do with this one is fold it upwards so that it creates a little pocket all right so I know that this is um, this is about nine and a half I'll probably have about a two inch pocket down here at the bottom once I fold it up so let's just go ahead and do that I'm just going to use the actual file folder that already has the correct measurements on it and I'm just going to um, pencil mark it or pen mark it because I don't see a pencil anywhere on my desk right now I'm just gonna pencil mark it right about there and there all right so that will be my fold section so I'll flip this open and score it with my scoreboard let me use my large scoreboard for this process 
and wherever it lands on here is where I will score it. So let's just get it up to a mark and it measures nine and a quarter. So that's where I will score it. Okay. And it's a little bit difficult to get it done because of the thickness of the folder. So I'll just open it up and score it right at nine and a quarter all the way down and uh, I'll flip it over and score it at two and a quarter because that seems to be the other side of it and that's where we'll fold this up to create some pockets in our file folder and then this will fold in like so and what I like to do and you don't have to do this but I like to remove the bulk out of the center of my um, my file folder pockets so I just cut little triangles right up to that score mark and that reduces the bulk so that the file folder folds over nice and neat without any um, without any bulk and hindrance in the uh, fold of the pocket itself so that's the wonkiest <laughs> triangle I've ever got all right so there's that this will then fold over like so and then you have no bulk here in the crease okay so I'll straighten that up later I just want to show you guys how to make um, how to make the tabs with the tab punch so to make my tab I usually start with which side is going to be the back okay so on my tabs this is the section that you'd want to write whatever this this uh, folder represents and then this section right here will be your front section okay so that's what I do with this I just grab my back section of my file folder flip it over to the pattern side and then I just okay so you can I did have to um, measure it in order for me to get this cascading effect um, of these tabs to go all the way down like you know all the way like this starts a second one but to get the cascading effect of all of these file folder tabs uh, you have to do some measuring I am just going to randomly do one because I've already got my cascade going so I'm just going to uh, pick any random um, setting on here let's just do five large I'm doing the five um, setting with the large um, the large option and I'm just gonna punch just like that and then you take your file folder flip it over okay and then this is this little curvy section right here is the beginning of your tab right here so I'm just gonna line that up with the large setting on the uh, punch and punch it again okay so now we have that so now we have this little tab right here it will be on the back section of the file folder so then you want to take your file folder over to the cut side of the we are memory keepers punch board using their little um, scoring or cut tool you just want to cut off the excess pieces and the punch board is really set up um, nicely to create all of this for you so there's no real struggles involved you just have to remember like which side you're working with which side you want to keep which side you want to get rid of so again I just slid it over and I'm just going to cut off the remaining section all right and that also included my folded section so now that I've done that this is my tab I now have to remove the excess that's on this side so here is your um, the tab this will be your front of the file folder and this is how much of it you want to take off so I'm just going to pencil mark it or pen mark it again because I can't find a pencil anywhere on here so I'm just using the back side of the file folder to give me my mark and using my large guillotine I'm going to cut away this excess 
process section. I know I went really quickly on this, guys, but it's it's really simple. If you have that tab punch by We Are Memory Keepers, um, try to keep the instructions because that helps a tremendous amount. Um, and uh, yeah, and those it really does not create any room for errors when you um, if you keep the instructions for that file folder I mean for the uh, the, the punch board um, so yeah so here's our little file folder this one actually has a pocket in there and I think that's super adorable all right so I'm gonna tuck this in here um, just about anywhere really and again it still has that cascading effect so that one basically does measure up to a previous one so again I'm starting a new section here in the back because I've gotten um, about six of these right here already cascading and I want to start a new a new cascade so anyway so this right here is going to be my little journal for all of my recipes and menu planning and prep and meal preps for 2023 in case you didn't watch the previous video I'm gonna move my large guillotine out of the way and let's talk about these tabs so on each tab I made myself a little list so I'm going to do about 12 sections in this journal I know that's a lot considering I said I was only going to put about three or four signatures in here I just went through the sections of what it is that I actually need so there's appetizers there's bread there's breakfast there's entrees fruit dessert uh, then there's lunch <laughs> we've got salads we have soups dinner vegetables okay so those are just um, just an idea of what you can actually do for a meal prep um, journal or um, a recipe book right so there's tons of other um, sections that you can put in I'm not sure if I'm gonna stamp each one of these as yet what I want to do is figure out um, how many appetizers am I going to need in here that could be a special occasion right so um, I'm just gonna write S O next to that so special occasions no one really eats appetizers on a daily basis but breads okay I can bake lots of breads trust me um, all right so we have breakfast lunch and dinner so there's a meal prep section right here and what I can do is put all of this into um, each individual fo uh, file folder right and um, I can then do um entrees soups and salads in a separate section so there's three other sections and then i can do fruits and vegetables in one section all by itself and um yeah i think i've pretty much narrowed it down so i won't need really i won't need six or twelve I think I was up to 12 um, I'll probably only need about eight or so so I'll put fruits and vegetables into one section soups and salads into its own section and then I'll do breakfast lunch and dinner in its own section or in its in each own section <laughs> Um, and then breads so okay so breads can also be considered grains so I'll write grains down here and that can be anything right that can be um, grains and nuts let's do grains and nuts now I do have a nut allergy so it's really only peanuts that I can actually eat I have a tree nut allergy um, so grains and nuts um, there are many many recipes that I know contains those and where it where like if you do look in a, in a recipe book and it says use almonds or pecans or whatever you can always substitute those for either a grain or a nut that you're not allergic to because I've done that in the past anyway so those are my sections that I definitely want to have into this journal and um, so yeah I've created that with file folders 
And again, this section right here is the only one that has a pocket. So let's go ahead and glue this up. I want to cut my pocket straight because I did do a terrible job at that. I'm just going to flip it over against itself and cut myself a nice straight pocket right there. Okay. And I will flip it back over. And I want to see if I want to do anything else to this. No, I think that's good enough. I will um, use some. Let's see if Art Glitter wants to play today. Okay, the cover came off. <laughs> that's always a plus. And um, okay, yeah, it's coming out of the tube very nicely. So I want to keep the middle open. I just want to close up this end section here. It's so weird to see my finger without a nail on it. I'm, I've been, my nails have always been very long, almost all my life. Um, so yeah, it's just weird. So I will probably just cut all of my nails down to match that one wonky nail. Um, yeah, and then just get a manicure from there. So yeah, my art glitter is cooperating tonight, and that's awesome. So what I've done for my construction situation, I do have a lot of construction going on, uh, reno renovations um, with demo projects and lots of things happening at my home. So I've switched my schedule to um, recording at night when there isn't that much noise in the background. So that's why we are able to record right now without any disturbance i just bent my <laughs> i just bent my art glitter stopper okay i will work on that later and straighten it up okay um so yeah craft the lanch all right so here's that little thing and what I was thinking I can do for this um, little pocket was tuck lots of things in here that I want to work on later so like I can use um, index cards jot down a bunch of info for a recipe or something that had like you know caught my eye or um, you know just like the ingredients to a recipe and then work on it to um, include the uh, the prep section the cook time and then um, you know whatever else that goes along with that just tuck things in and um, and then go on from there so okay you're probably wondering how am I going to get all of this into here and what I want to do, and I'm pretty ambitious over this, I've done, um, I've used my crocodile in the past and punched holes in the side here on my spine and then inserted eyelets to uh, reinforce the fraying of the fabric and whatnot. That's a lot of work but I think it's worth it I think it's worth giving it a try here I have one two three four five six seven eight uh, file folders so I think I'm gonna give it a whirl <laughs> super ambitious but because this fabric is dark because this fabric is dark, I think I'm going to need a white pen to mark it. You know, I just want to keep it pretty, oh, it's getting warm in here. Keep it pretty uh, fluid and, um, and, you know, reusable because there's a lot of work that's going to go into the journal itself. So, let's see. I will figure out how I'm going to get all of these in here. And I know it doesn't look like a big deal right now because they all are closed up. But once you start sticking things into here, you know how a junk journal goes. You know what happens with a junk journal. It becomes a chunky monkey really quickly just by inserting signatures um, besides having file folders, right? So I think I want to get rid of some of these harsh corners I don't know 
they're not really offending me but there are some of these that are just so pointy let me just try one and see I'll try the smallest see just that alone really changes the the look of it and I think I need to do that I think I need to get rid of these harsh corners here and just soften it a little bit with some very tiny corner rounder so I'm using my the smallest corner rounder possible which is four millimeters and because I've already done my tabs it may be difficult to get to some of these but yeah just removing these pointy corners already makes me feel better about the project all right while I'm doing this I'm really just contemplating like how am I going to stitch this in and I think I think I'm going to go for it with the crop dial and make it work to my advantage I'm going to um, oh this one has a pocket hang on I am going to um, use the crop dial to to give me um, the holes that I need on the spine of the journal already I feel better about these okay so let me grab my crop dial and I'll be back in two ticks you guys I am truly um, nervous about punching holes with my crop dial even if I were to um, place these one millimeter apart um, that still only leaves me uh, room for six millimeters, right? So here's one. Okay, so zero. I'll have seven millimeters across here that I can, um, you know, seven holds really that I can work with. But my crop dial only have a one eighth setting and a three sixteenth setting, which is larger, of course, than the one eighth. So I don't think. That I'll have enough room I'll have enough room I just won't have enough room for all of these file folders so maybe I need to make my sections even smaller than the um, than the ones that I've mentioned here okay so I may have to do breakfast lunch and dinner soups and salads and then fruits and vegetables so that's five I think I can get through with five let's try it I'll do one two three four and five hmm you know decisions decisions I think this is something that I need to sleep on because yeah I don't know I'm so I'm so nervous to try it anyway let me grab my all because um, my all this is an all it will help me decide because this is much smaller than the 1 8 setting on my crop dial and I can get much smaller holds on there but I also want to have a writing space in here I can put my writing space into my file folders so that won't be a problem so yeah I'm gonna use the all I'm gonna grab these settings on here from my ruler I'm gonna use my um, millimeter settings and I'm gonna put one at the one one at the two three four and five okay wish me luck <laughs> all right let's do it okay so I am going to get a full measurement of this on the millimeter side and it measures 23 oh it measures exactly 24 millimeters so that's good I will um, 3 12 and 20 let's do 21 okay so 312 and 21 will be my um, settings 
on here and it's just me doing some math I mean <sighs> this is all it is all right I'm gonna do one let's do one tonight and I will figure out the rest tomorrow okay um, so here we go I'm gonna do three um, yeah let's do three just gonna put a little dot right there that's my three setting and I'm gonna figure out where it goes that will also be my my three setting on here okay so that's my first one let's just do it I'm gonna use the all I'm gonna poke through all the way Okay, there's a hole. There's one hole right in there. Do you see that? Can you see that? It's right there. All right, so there's one hole already poked through. So going directly down, oops, going directly across. I'm gonna do it across. I'm gonna do one at three. Um, so I've done my three. I'm gonna do one at um, um, at every millimeter. So there's, oops, wrong thing. One, two, I've got three, four, and five. Let's see how that works out. Let's just see. All right, so. Oh, I've rearranged my desk. I don't know where my little, oh, here it is. My little foamy pad. Okay, so I'm gonna go through here. I'm gonna go through here. Yeah, this isn't bad. One millimeter apart is perfect, actually. And here. All right, so I'm just gonna widen these holes with my awl. I think this is better than actually using the crocodile. There's a lot more um, control that you can have, right? So there's that. And now I'm going to get my measurement. I'm gonna go back to the three mark right there. And I'm gonna go down to about 12, which is will be my center. Uh, let's do let's do 11 millimeters as my center okay so where's my marker oh. okay so at the 11 millimeter mark which I poked through right there okay going all the way across lining it up with the three I've got three, two, and one, and then four and five. Yep, I think so far this is working out. If anything goes awry, I will let you know. So I'm just poking through with my awl and widening these holes. That'll make it really easy for my needle to go through okay and I should be using my foamy thing so let me move my crocodile because I'm not gonna use that it's just too sketchy <laughs> it's just not um, it's too much of a risk guys I spent a lot of time wrapping this book into the position that it's in currently and I don't want to ruin it by driving an all um, a crocodile setter through there. It would just craft the lanch. It would just ruin it for me. I think not having any control over where it goes. So, yep, I'm just using that. All right. So now we have two sets of holes. And now I'm going to go do the same thing down at the bottom. I'm going to line this up on the, th the three, which was my center mark. 
and I'm gonna go in at about 21 right there okay and where did I put it let's try that again oh it's on the A okay I see it and then I'm just going to line this up with three so there's my little mark it's on the three so we'll do five four three two and one okay and this section is a little bit more challenging to see but I think I think I got it right where I want it so there's that four three was on the A two and one okay yep that should about do it okay so this is what we're going with I'll show you what it looks like on the inside all right so these are all lined up I've got room for five signatures or at least I think I do anyway all right guys I'm going to grab some thread and I think I want to use some black this is just waxed cord um, and the measurements for um, for doing a three hole pamphlet stitch with wax cord on your junk journal um, is two and a half times the height of the book right so I've got one two and a half so Sometimes I do a little bit more if I want to do a spine dangle or something like that out the bottom of the book. So I will just do a three on this one. Okay. And um, I'm going to cut it right down here. And whoops. And now I know I need five of these. So here's one. And we just line it up. And, whoops, and snip it. There's two. Hope I don't run out of thread. Here's, here's three. Oh, come on. Here we go. All right. Gets a little spidery after a while. Okay, there's three. Here's four. And here is five. Okay, so I am running a little low on black. But I chose black because um, the outside of the spine is primarily black and just in case just in case things don't line up properly it won't look so bad all right so um, let's just grab one of these folders and I know my measurements because I did the exact same thing on here I'm gonna do it at what did I say <laughs> 3 11 and 22 21 yeah 3 11 and 21 all right so on here this is the spine of the of the um folder this is my first one all right i'll have to rearrange these again let's do that again 3 11 and 21 according to the millimeter side of the ruler so three eleven and 21 okay. and I'm just going to show you guys how I stitch this three hole pamphlet stitch in here um, looking for a needle 
So here are my little junk journal needles. Oh, that's really big. Um, let's try this one. And these are just darning needles. You can get these anywhere, probably at Joann's or Walmart or wherever has a sewing section. And to begin um, stitching up a junk journal, you always want to start in the center. And this is just my example of me showing you how this is done. So you start with the center of your item your file folder or what have you. I'm going to take this apart because I do want to put paper in here. I'm just showing you guys how I would stitch this up. You start here in the center and uh, you go into the center of the location that you want your file folder. Starting off straight always helps and um, then you want to go into, you came out through the back, you want to go into the top section of the uh, spine of the book and find the top hole in the file folder. Okay, And then you want to go all the way down to the bottom section, the 21 mark that we made. And every so often you just want to flip everything over and make sure that you are stitching into the correct hole, um, both on the um, the folder or the signature or whatever it is that you're putting in you want to make sure that you're stitching it into the correct hole on the spine of the book itself so there's that oh, come on go through it's a little a little tight okay there we go and then you want to come back through to the middle again so here's our middle hole and we'll pull it through the middle hole on the file folder. So this is where things can go crazy, right? So this is what you need to do. You need to make sure that this little bridge right here, do you see that? That you have one string on one side of the bridge and one string on the other side of the bridge. If that doesn't happen, you're not stitching in anything, okay? And um, of course now is when you want to even everything up. Make sure that your two uh, strings are even. And the other thing you want to make sure that you don't do is stitch your string. So if that happens, you can just pull them apart uh, with your awl or what have you. Um, maybe you have a pokey tool or something. But yeah, just make sure that you didn't stitch your string in the process. And um, and uh, you have one on either side of the this little bridge. And then you want to make sure that your um, item that you've just stitched in is straight because sometimes it can be wonky. It can, you know, be just as crooked as this right here. You don't want this, right? So you want to straighten up everything and make sure everything is nice and straight because where you tie this off is where it's going to live. Then you do a box knot. So I'm going to do one right over left. Right? And you pull tight, but not too tight that it's tearing. And then you want to do another one left over right. So that's what a box knot is. And then you can either leave these dangling down at the bottom to, um, you know, you can add charms to this or what have you. Or you can tie it in a little bow here in the center of the signature or folder. But again, I'm going to take this apart to add some paper in here um, to create a journaling space as well as recipe space. I also pulled out my little um, recipe um, stamping blocks. So here, this is what I picked up. I've had this for a while. I picked this up at, oh, what is it? Tuesday morning. Yeah. And it has name of the dish, ingredients, directions, recipe notes, you know, just a bunch of little um, things that will help making a, um, a recipe junk journal useful and easier. I also have these, again, these are both by Miss Sparkle and Company, so I think you can probably get these at Joann's as well. This, but, but again, I picked this up at Tuesday morning, so it has all kinds of fruits and vegetables, salads, entrees, beverages, you name it. It's all here for me to stamp on these file folders 
okay guys I've given you guys plenty plenty to think about and I have some more things to think about as well before continuing in this book so I'm going to leave you guys right here on my messy desk and I hope you guys have a crafty day stay naturally curious and don't forget to check out my links down below and um yeah this is what the book will look like eventually yeah. all right guys I'll definitely talk to y'all in the next video like and subscribe and don't forget to share all right bye